Anyone born with spina bifida will have to learn how to look after their bladder. But before we can explain what that will involve, we have to understand how the bladder normally works. The bladder looks like a balloon, and it behaves just like a balloon too. It stretches to accommodate all the wee, then when we go to the toilet, the whole bladder squeezes and shrinks down. So an empty bladder is little and flat. The wee is produced by the kidneys. We could call them our wee factories. The heart pumps blood around the body and as it passes through the kidneys, they filter it to get rid of all the waste liquid. The clean blood is then pumped around the body and the waste liquid, wee, comes down little tubes called ureters and is stored in the bladder until it's time to do a wee. There are two sets of muscles to do with bladders. First of all, holding on ones at the bottom, like an elastic band around the neck of the bladder. Their job is to hold on tight to stop the wee leaking out until it's time to go to the toilet. Then when we get there, they need to relax and open and stay open until all the wee has come out. The other set are all around the bladder. In fact, the bladder is made of muscles. Their job is to stay relaxed and allow the bladder to stretch and stretch and accommodate all the wee. Then, when we reach the toilet, they need to squeeze and keep squeezing until all the wee is gone. The two sets of muscles have to work together as a team. Most of the time the holding on ones are shut and the stretchy squeezy ones are relaxed. Then when we do a wee, the holding on ones relax and the stretchy squeezy ones contract. But not many of us are really aware of our bladder muscles. We don't have to tell them what to do, we go to the toilet and it just happens. So how do they know what to do? What we need in our picture is the brain. When the bladder is full, it sends a message to the brain to tell us we need a wee. Then a reflex sends a message back telling our holding our muscles to relax and our stretchy squeezy ones to squeeze. When we're babies, that's all that happens, so we wear a nappy to catch the wee as it comes out. When we're potty trained, we learn to recognise the feeling of the full bladder. The message goes up to the brain to say we need a wee, and we stop the reflex until we get to the toilet. It's a bit like pressing pause until we get to the toilet, then play when we've safely arrived. The bit of our body that enables us to have that control is the external sphincter part of our holding on muscle. But we're not really aware of it. Not many of us can remember being potty trained and learning to hold on and then to relax. So, now we know how the bladder should behave. In order to understand how the bladder differs in someone with spina bifida, we've got to look at how the messages travel between the bladder and the brain. We know that the message is sparked off by the bladder stretching. The message then travels along nerves to reach the spinal cord, which is like a very fat, important nerve that takes messages from all over the body up to the brain. But if you're born with something wrong with your spine, that message can't get through properly. Everyone is different. Some people don't have any sensation at all, while others do have some awareness. If the message doesn't get up to the brain, we won't know when we need a wee. And if the message doesn't get sent reliably from the brain to the bladder, then our bladder muscles might misbehave. The holding on muscles might forget to hold on, and the wee might leak out. Or it might forget to open, so the wee gets stuck inside, called retention. Or perhaps the muscles will open and let some wee out, then close again before the bladder is completely empty. The wee left behind inside provides a really good place for bugs to grow, so we're at risk of developing a urinary tract infection. About the stretchy squeezy muscles, how might they misbehave? Well, it could be that instead of doing a big squeeze when we go for a wee, they stop before the bladder is empty. Again, there will be wee left behind causing risk of infection. Or they might squeeze when they shouldn't, what we call overactivity. Lots of squeezing means the muscles get overused 
and the bladder wall becomes thickened and loses its elasticity. So instead of stretching to hold all the wee, it can't expand and the pressure inside the bladder starts to rise. This is bad news for the kidneys. High pressure in the bladder means that the wee trying to get down the ureters can't get in and gets stored in the kidneys and the ureters. There isn't really any storage space there, so kidney damage is likely to occur. So how do we keep our bladders healthy? Well, the important things for everyone are drinking plenty and spacing the drinks out throughout the day so the bladder gets plenty of exercise by filling and emptying. And when we go to the toilet, we should sit comfortably and relax to encourage the muscles to behave so the bladder can empty to completion. And everyone needs to be careful not to get constipated or the full bowel will occupy the space where the bladder should be able to expand and the bladder gets squashed. A squashed bladder is not a happy bladder. It can't hold much wee, so has to empty frequently and the bowel bumping into it leads to urgency. And unless the holding on muscles hold on really tight, we is likely to leak out. Plus, it's hard for the wee to drain properly, so there is likely to be some stuck inside after a wee, and that means a big risk of urinary tract infection. People with spina bifida and other spinal problems are likely to have to work a bit harder to keep their bladders healthy. We know that they may not be able to empty all the wee out just by going to the toilet, so they are very likely to need to use a catheter to drain the rest. A catheter is a thin, flexible tube which is lubricated so it slides easily into the urethra, the passage that links the bladder with the outside of the body. Although catheterization is a bit scary at first, with practice it doesn't hurt at all and children as young as four years old can do it by themselves. The catheter only stays in long enough to drain the wee. We call this intermittent catheterization. Most people do it every three hours or so, so about five catheters every day. The other likely intervention is medication to relax the stretchy squeezy muscles and stop the overactivity. This is usually given by mouth but may be put straight into the bladder through a catheter. Bladders that have a damaged nerve supply due to something like spina bifida are called neuropathic bladders. Anyone who has a neuropathic bladder will be under the care of specialist doctors and nurses who will teach them everything they need to do to keep their kidneys safe and to promote continence. For some this will just be catheters, perhaps with medication, for others, surgery will be involved. Most people born with spina bifida will be able to be clean and dry by the time they're teenagers, if they want to be, as long as they put in the work. There is no magic wand to make bladders behave.